Pliscota on 5%, known as Brizula, aka CB0301, is a new topical antiandrogen formulation being developed by Cosmo Pharmaceuticals. In the recent study, Phase 3 trial, Clascoteron cream achieved major efficacy milestones when patients recorded a 539% relative improvement in target area hair count compared with placebo. Now let's imagine your scalp only has 20 hairs per centimeter square density which is considered as advanced hair thinning. A 5.39x boost in hair regrowth, as mainstream media frames it, could be easily understood as what you can see on the second image. But that's totally wrong. So relax, 2026 won't be the year when all of the hair transplant doctors will go bankrupt just yet. So let me share with you what the 539% actually means, what to expect from Clascoder on 5% in 2026, how many hairs can it actually grow, and how it may stack up against minoxidil and finasteride. No hype, just the truth. And before we jump in, while everybody's waiting for the next miracle hair treatment, don't forget that the basics still win. This video is sponsored by Ulo, and I partnered with them because they are one of the few companies doing personalized science-based hair loss plans that are built around the latest hair loss research and optimized for safety. So if you prefer structure than the random trial and error, go check them out. And now let's start with what Clascoteron actually does. Instead of lowering hormones in your whole body like oral finasteride, Clascoteron is designed to work locally by blocking androgen receptors in the scalp right at the follicle. So the goal is reduce androgen signaling where it matters without messing with the systemic hormone levels. And yes, Clascoteron already exists in a 1% version for acne under the name Win Levy. The 5% version, though, is the one being aimed at hair loss. What the 539% study didn't tell many of us is how many hairs can Clascoteron actually grow? And in order to find it out, let's rewind 7 years. This is when I covered Clascoteron on this channel for the first time, and it started out promising. The target area hair counts improved by more than 12 new hairs grown in 6 months in the 5% Clascoteron group and 20 plus hairs in the 7.5 Clascoteron group after six months. And I even compared these hair counts to finasteride's one year target area hair count performance and they were quite similar. Based on the trial one and trial two studies, Cosmo even hinted that 7.5% could be the go-to concentration for phase three. But eventually they went with 5%. They didn't explain why, but there is a practical reason that makes sense. If 5% concentration holds up better long term costs less and perform close enough to the 7.5% one, then 5% is the one that you commercialize. And that's what we saw when comparing the 6 months and 12 months efficacy data on 5% versus 7.5% Clascoteron solution. But because of the global pandemic in 2020, the recruitment of patients into the third trial was postponed and slowed down. And we haven't heard much from them for the 5 long years, pretty much until December 2025. And so on December 3rd, 2025, Cosmo Pharmaceuticals published the top-line results of its two phase 3 trials called SCALP-1 and SCALP-2. In total, 1,465 men with androgenetic alopecia participated, making it the largest research program for a topical treatment against baldness. SCALP-1 study showed an improvement of 168% in hair count in target area versus placebo. And the SCALP-2 group showed the more spectacular result, the one all the media have highlighted. The study recorded a 539% relative improvement in target area hair count compared with placebo. This means a relative percentage difference in performance between the placebo group and the Clascoteron 5% group. Unfortunately, they did not release any graphics or detailed outcome data about target area hair counts or target area hair width. But I will illustrate to you exactly what the 539% actually came from. As an example, I took this topical versus oral finasteride study where they also included placebo group. And we can see that the performance of oral finasteride 1 milligram after 24 weeks of treatment was 21.1 new hairs gained from the baseline, while the placebo group 
gained 6.7 hairs compared to the baseline after 24 weeks. The difference is in this case 315% or 3.15x. Of course, the relative difference, not the absolute difference. So if we divide 21.1 by 6.7, we get 3.5x or 315%. So if placebo improves only a little and treatment improves more, the relative difference between the groups can look massive. So let's say Clascoteron 5% achieved a target area hair count improvement of 13, as it was the case in their second trial after 12 months. And if placebo group only got 2.4 hairs more from the baseline after 12 months, if we divide 13 by 2.4, it equals about 5.3, which corresponds to the 530% relative improvement compared with placebo. It's a massive difference in relative terms, but not in absolute terms. Now let's look at the actual photographic evidence from their third trial. The left side is the before photo and the right side is the after photo. I see an improvement. Some hair is thickening visually with the second patient, especially who was a diffuse thinner, which is very good, but way less than 539%, simply because the hair regrowth in absolute terms is much lower than in relative terms. Now, based on these photos, we cannot even talk about possible hair loss stabilization effects of clascoteron without being able to see terminal, valus, and total hair count values before and after. Now, the good news is safety. Top-line statements suggest adverse events were very similar to placebo, with most being mild or moderate, things like skin irritation in some users. And based on how clascoteron is designed to act locally, it makes sense that systemic side effects might be limited. So in the best case scenario, Clascoteron 5% could become a very interesting option for people who don't tolerate finasteride, people who refuse oral meds, or people looking for some extra hair loss stacking and something that won't compete with minoxidil or finasteride. So if you want to get updates as full data gets published and you want to get precise and science-based breakdowns on other treatments and products in the pipelines, subscribe, hit the notification bell and tell me in the comments below once Clascoder on 5% hits the market, would you use it and how would you stack it yourself?